Hey guys, it's Jen. Welcome back to the channel. Today I have a really good scary story to share with you. Now, normally I do my makeup and share these stories, but today I kind of like the look that I already have, so I'm going to go ahead and go with this and just share the story with you anyway. So if that sounds interesting to you, then stick around because I'm about to get started. But before I do, if you haven't already, please like and subscribe because it really does help me out a lot and it is always greatly appreciated. And with that being said, let's get into today's video. Now I think we can all agree that dolls are harmless, but some people suffer from a real phobia that is called pediophobia, and that's the fear of dolls. And I myself have had uneasy moments with certain dolls. Normally it's the antique ones, the collectibles, they always just kind of give me that unsettling, kind of uneasy feeling. I don't know why, it's just something that happens from time to time. But the doll I'm gonna talk about today might actually be dangerous. When it comes to hauntings, dolls seem to turn up often. Their placid faces frozen in an eternal smile seem to attract children and adults alike. These glazed-eyed figures are also irresistible to the opportunistic spirit as well. In Singapore on 2014, on an extremely hot day in June in a busy marketplace, this mysterious doll appeared and caught the eye of a vendor. He had seen it propped under a tree, and as he approached the doll, his intrigue and curiosity grew when he realized that the doll was blindfolded. It was a worn, ratty thing that had a mass of stringy, dark hair. Its dress was all tattered and dirty. Its shoes that were once white were clogged with dirt. It wasn't long before a crowd gathered around and they were all just staring at this strange doll that was propped up under this tree. And they noticed that it had a brooch around its neck. And they wondered if perhaps it had some value as you know, an antique. And on closer inspection, they realized that there was a message that had been scribbled across the blindfold. It was written in Arabic. The markings said Bishmela, which translated means in the name of God. This didn't phase the vendor and the crowd alike as they all just really marveled over this strange thing that had just seemed to appear out of nowhere. It was discovered that same day that a man had hung himself. He had taken his own life, but there was nothing to indicate any kind of depression, nothing leading up to this incident. He just made this decision. No one really understands why. And not long after that, on the same day also, another man was discovered a victim of foul play. Now, the reason why this is strange is because this particular city is known for its low crime rate. They didn't put two and two together with the discovery of the doll. They just figured that it was a fluke. A few days after the bodies were discovered, messages started surfacing online, cryptic messages from someone who had claimed to be the previous owner of the doll. And they admitted that they had left it on the roadside purposely, hoping that someone would come across the doll and take it home. They stated that they knew it was wrong, but they felt that they had no other choice. To them, what appeared to be an innocent collectible was actually a monster. They went on to explain that they had come across the doll on the roadside, finding it by accident as well. They were immediately intrigued by the doll. They they also had found it blindfolded and took the blindfold off and that was proven to be the biggest mistake. The people who discovered these messages online believe that the person who was writing them was female. So I'm going to continue on with the story referring to this person as she or her. She claimed to be captivated by the doll's stare and cast off the face covering and took it home. Later that night, she claimed to hear something moving around her house. And when she went to investigate, she discovered that the doll had somehow moved from one side of the room to the other. And the doll's mobility was only the beginning. On many occasions, she claimed that she could hear a woman in a room where she had left the doll having a conversation with no one. Lengthy conversations spoke in a Singaporean language called Malay. She also claimed to have witnessed the doll moving on its own as she watched it, changing positions and moving its head. She believed that she had brought home a trapped spirit and decided to destroy the doll. She tried smashing it, but in spite of her best efforts, the doll retained its shape. She tried lighting it on fire, but it wouldn't catch flame. And at this point, she was terrified. She knew that this was no ordinary doll. She now understood why she'd found it on the roadside. That was the only way to be rid of it. It was clear to her that the doll had to be passed on to someone else. So she bound the doll's eyes just how she had previously found it because she believed if she didn't blindfold the doll that it would be aware of where it was going, it would be able to find its way back to her. Before leaving the doll, she felt a pang of guilt in what she was doing and she wanted to leave a message 
warning the person who came across it next that this doll was dangerous. So she scribbled on the blindfold in Arabic. Unfortunately, when the doll was rediscovered, no one understood the language, so they didn't know what the message meant. The blindfold again would be removed and the doll would gaze upon its new owner. In that crowded marketplace on that day, it's not clear on who was the first to lock eyes with this doll, but once the blindfold was removed and that person did look into the eyes of the doll, it immediately would latch onto them and they would become the new owner. But no one ever came forward to claim that they were previously the owner of the doll and it's just not clear who took it home that day. But the point is relevant because odds are this otherworldly vagabond has exchanged hands many times since then. It's also possible that this doll isn't an antique at all. Some claim it might be the work of Christy Bassett. She's the creator of Creepy Dolls beginning in 2002, but no one's had any complaints or haven't been any problems with any other dolls in that collection. So it's possible that it's not a part of that collection, that it's a whole separate entity altogether. But there are similarities, so I can understand why people might think that it was her work. It's no doubt that the doll is still out there, moving from one unsuspecting owner to the next. Its whereabouts are still unknown. So knowing that the doll is still out there and no one being certain exactly where it is, if you're out and about one day and you come across a discarded doll that's blindfolded, I recommend you keep walking. Some things are best left alone. Okay, so let's talk about today's story. There are several people out there that believe that there is a doll out there that is latching on to people and basically haunting their homes, that it's, it's a, a haunted doll. I don't know if that is true or not. Um, I suppose anything is possible. I still get a creeped out feeling from dolls. I don't know if maybe you feel the same way. Some people really love dolls. I've always kind of felt a little ugh, creeped out by some of them. I don't think that any of them are really haunted. I've never really experienced a haunted doll, so it's difficult for me to say whether I really believe this story or not. But like I said, there are several people that actually really do. Uh, if I saw a doll like that on the roadside, I'm pretty sure that I would keep on moving. I would have no trouble. I don't feel like I would be, you know, drawn to it or want to bring it home. I think that I would run away. <laughs> it would be my nature, quite frankly. But even though I don't think that this is entirely true, I do think it's a very interesting story and I'm curious to hear your thoughts. I look forward to talking to you guys about it in the comments. So anyway, that is gonna do it for me today, guys. I just wanna thank you so much for sticking around and watching. I really do appreciate it. And until next time, Stay alert.